So Gina and I and the rest of the board are tasked with trying to make sure that high school boys volleyball, one, continues to grow in Texas, and two, that what we have is the best possible product for you guys and for the boys so that they, they're continuing to be excited about it. And there's nothing, not nothing, but as little frustration as possible, right? More positives than negatives is, is, is our gig. Um, so I would like to first, all the teams that are back for their second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, 10th season, Allen High School, Jesuit High School, welcome back. Any of our new first year teams, who's a, a first year team in the league this year? Where are we from? St. Mark's. From St. Mark's? Well, Not why, a first year volleyball team, yeah. but first year in our league. And it's, that, it's really exciting for me that St. Mark's is in. We've had Trinity involved, we had Green Hill has been involved. Um, yes. Yeah, Wiley D2. Wiley and D2, yeah. perfect. Uh, yes. Flower Mound High School. And Flower Mound High School. And Flower Mound has been in and then was yeah. out for a couple years and we're back yeah. in. That is that is awesome. New guy. Okay. Yes. Perfect, perfect. Um, no, I was good. No, Matt's, Matt's been around forever. Yeah, Matt's, Matt's been around longer than I have. Uh, so just quick, quick overview on kind of the, the status of the league you're part of. Um, this year in our Division One, we have 24 teams competing in North Texas. We are all broken up into three districts of eight each that Gina has been tasked and broken us all up regionally and then organized all our schedules that got sent out. Um, we also have nine teams in Division One in Houston this year that are gonna be competing against each other. And for the first time, we've got four teams competing in Austin. Um, so that is super, super exciting. Um, and then we're all coordinating to create a playoff system at the end where we link up the, the three region winners from North Texas. are gonna take on a crossover match between Austin and Houston. They're gonna send up one representative to be part of our state tournament. I'm gonna to get back into that. Um, additionally, we've got division two going on this year for the first time. Uh, kind of harkens back to the early stages of the league when uh, basically we would just gather on Saturdays and play a little friendly get together, pool play, round robins, about four, and then have like a little end of the year tournament, high five at the end, and it was super, super cool. Um, it is an easy entry point into boys volleyball. And I'll just go ahead and jump ahead to the end of the agenda and say, well, almost all of us are dialed into division one, as ambassadors of the sport now, if we hear of anyone along the way that's like, yeah, my friends over at such and such high school like have six guys that like would love to play. Division two, they can jump into those play dates like in April. That is, that is the easy entry point for anybody. That's why we're doing it this year. We have seven teams that are already signed up to play in division two in North Texas. We've got four or five that are signed up to play Division II in Houston. So if, again, if we hear of any opportunities, um, that, that's a great entry point for them. Um, okay, it says UIL here. We're, we are working as an organization. The end goal is to basically get ourselves all fired, it is to get to a point where we can go to the state and say, this thing is too much for us to manage on our own. Doggone it, you have to take it. Um, so once a year in June, I go down hat in hand to the UIL spring legislative meeting and give them a update on our league. Um, and the last two years, I've been able to tell them that we've grown. I'm already excited because when I go there this June, I'm gonna be able to say that we've experienced at least 30% growth from last year as well with the division addition of division two and then the austin district and the growth in houston so it's all super super positive and it's all on you know volunteers so you guys are awesome i'll say thank you like a thousand times i'm just going to start by saying thank you for coming tonight thank you for volunteering thank you for making it happen okay so um we got our new teams paperwork i need it <laughs> before you play um under our name 
Like if you're having practices at your school and church you, then that's totally fine. But before you play anything for our league, I need to have the waivers that I sent you and I'll be sending it again. Um, I need to have USAV registration and there's usually just a number where you can just, there are different ways of sending it to me. I just need proof, I don't care how you give it to me. Um, and then um, your rosters. If you update your rosters at any time, that's totally fine. Um, just make sure you send me the updated roster and the new USAV information. Um, otherwise, you guys aren't insured. So you get a number for, for each player? Yeah. USAV number for yeah. each player. So in the, the digital doc that you have, the USAV registration is a live link that you can forward to your guys via text message or you can email to their parents and they can get on there. It's a $25 registration through USA Volleyball. They have to have that to be insured. Um, way back in the day when Jim Stewart was running the league, we were insured totally separately. Um, we kind of took over the league a few years back. USAV came alongside us and said, hey, we can take care of your insurance. Um, so it really each, helps keep the building cost down. Yes, yes. Um, but we need to get every single guy and all of our coaches have to get, get registered with that. Just a quick heads up, if your guys are minors, it's super quick, it's super easy. It, it kind of looks funny because I think it's like a $10 and a $15 becomes 25 um, but it's just click click pay and you're done if your players are 18 by default it will make them do the full safe sport training which is a drag and, but that's just they have to do it that it's it's part of the deal they cannot register with USA volleyball as a legal adult without doing the safe sport training. Um, so they have to go through, all right, if you are in a situation where you're arguing with a player's parent, you should do this. This is what grooming is. Like it's it's all the stuff, okay? So just, you can give them a heads up, hey, if you're 18, I'm really sorry. It's gonna take you a couple hours. What if they're 17 when they register and they turn 18? When they, I, when they register, I believe if they're 17, they're good. If they play club, they do not have to re-register. If they play club and they're already registered with USA Volleyball, they just need to give their coach that number. And we need to get that number on their roster. Any questions about that? Okay, cool. All right, let's get into structure of our regular season. So we said we've got three districts of eight teams. We've got our West, Central, and East regions. Um, Gina sent the schedule out on there. We're all scheduled to play each team in our district one time starting on February 20th. All of those matches are scheduled on Tuesdays. We'll get back to that in just a second. Okay. There is not a home or a visiting team designated. There is a home or visiting. Okay. It is a suggestion. Okay. There is no requirement, right? Let's say on February 20th, Matt, Stevie, and I, Rockwell and Allen are scheduled to play. We contact one another and agree, okay, you're either gonna host or we're gonna host, okay? And it is, we're working together here, right? It may be based on the availability of their gym, especially in those early matches when there's maybe basketball playoffs that we're continuing with at some of our schools, right? Maybe they got a playoff game that their school's hosting on that Tuesday and we don't, we're open. You guys can come to our place, okay? But there is not a set in stone. You have to, you have to host, you don't have to host, okay? I, I believe one of our schools whose administration is a little less supportive is talking about charging them upwards of $150 an hour to use the gym. That team may not be able to host a match all year, which is a drag, right? When we moved from the Saturday tournaments to a weekday competition format, it was, so this can feel as much like a sanctioned sport 
as it can feel like for our players in the league. We want to give them that. And to do that, like being able to play a home match is, is really, really cool. Okay? But there may be schools that for whatever reason just can't do it. Okay? So we we're gonna accommodate. We're all working together is what I'm saying. Okay? If you are hosting, so if we agreed that Rockwell was gonna host the match with Allen, it is my responsibility to get an official for that match, right? Would it be ideal if we had two officials? Sure. I'll tell you this. In the regular season last year, every match that we hosted at Rockwall, we had one official because we are an unfunded sport, right? And we, we could manage one official. We could not manage two officials. So one official, and let's define what an official is, right? Like, <laughs> let's define what an official is because again, we're working together here and everybody's funding scenario is different, right? Do we want to have a certified, sanctioned official at every one of our events? Absolutely, right? If that is cost prohibitive for your school, we'll just say me again, right? One of my best friends, Trent Tharp, has been coaching volleyball, and another one of my best friends, Randy Llewellyn, has been coaching volleyball and involved in the sport from the time they were like 15 years old. They're both older than I am now. Either of them is fully qualified to ref a high school boys volleyball match. They know the rules, they can manage a game, and they can blow a whistle. Okay? Do I lean on them as infrequently as possible? Right? But if, if we're in a bind, I can call one or two of them, and they will come and wear a white polo shirt. You'll never know that they are not a ref. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, um, we, if, if we have an official, there are a variety of ways that we can pay those officials. And again, every school scenario is different. Okay, um, at, at my school, they let me like have a cash gate as you walk in. So we'll charge $5 and I'll communicate. If you're coming to play at my place, I'll communicate to you, hey, we're, we're charging an entry fee because we're gonna use that entry fee to pay the officials. It's just gonna turn right around to them. That's one way to pay the officials, right? Some schools, man, you, you better not be handling cash, okay? And that, that, that's the deal, right? And that's almost all of our Houston schools. And if, if that's the case, then we're in a different spot and we're gonna be understanding one another, okay? Um, if we're looking to get in touch with an official, like we'll, we'll send out some contacts. Um, I know Rick in the West has got a contact that's on our, our actual list that he uses that can also put us in contact with other officials. Um, I've got a few names that can help in, in the Central and in the East as well, okay? That's responsibility one, is to have officials or official, right? Line judges, someone keeping score. We have to staff the match. If you're going to host a match, you have to staff the match. And then, if you're hosting the match, you're responsible for reporting the scores. Right? Each of our districts, we have a point person. So if you're competing in the East, I'm that point person. So when your match is done, you're going to email me your scores of that match. And then I'll report those to Gina so we can keep track of this elite. Right? If you're in the West, that's going to go to Rick. And if you're in the central, that's going to go to Damon, okay? And it's it's listed that that point person is listed on your your district list, okay? Okay. Rules. We use high school rules. So biggest difference between high school and club rules. In high school, we get 18 subs. In high school, you can only have one libero. You cannot have two liberos. You can switch that libero every single set but you can only have one libero at a time per set. Um, other big variances, uh, the, the call underneath the net in club, in USA Volleyball, in college, international, everywhere but high school, under the net is a judgment call if you interfered with play. In high school, if your whole foot or hand goes across that line, you're under. 
and it's not a judgment. You're either under or you're not. And we're going to use high school rules, right? We're going to be a high school sport, we're going to use high school rules. Um, netting is the same. I think we still have some invertent nets in USA Volleyball. In high school, you touch the net, it's a net. That's it. There's no pursuit, right? And I think that varies depending on the location in USA Volleyball in college. If the ball goes over the net and out, you can run outside the post and bring it back in. In high school, that midline is, it goes forever. And you can't cross it, right? Um, those are the big ones. Am I missing any big rule differences? Five sets. What's that? Five sets. Best of five. Best of five. Fifth set is to 15. If we have a JV or we're doing best, best of three. three. Yeah, if we're going to play a JV match before the varsity match, we'll go best of three. Um, tournament play. Tournament play will be best two out of three. Um, if you're having a JV match before the varsity match, you can decide as coaches, if we go to a third set, do we want to go to 15 or 25? Entirely up to you. Okay? But in the varsity matches, the fifth set has to be to 15. Has to be 15. Did I, I said 18 subs instead of 12. Did I say that or no? Well, that's like the big one. Is you got eight. You have 18. That's per yep. set. Per set, you have 18 substitutions. I was going to say one quick thing going back to the officials mm -hmm. and kind of the idea that Travis was getting at. I wanted to kind of echo it. Our relationship to each other. I'm Damon from Jesuit, by the way. Our relationship to each other is important. We're all working together. And I think the officials are in that same category. Sometimes we just kind of forget, like, whatever. And yeah, we start at six, but we, we tell them six, whatever. And so when they're not communicated with, they're kind of a part of the team. Like, they, they want to help. And so just being kind and letting them know little weird changes, because our sport is constantly changing. And sometimes they get a bad taste in their mouth. Now we have an even smaller pool of officials. Just kind of keeping that in mind. Uh, and I know that you were covering that, but I just wanted to kind of echo that. Yeah, if, if, if something comes up and there's there's change, um, that we did, we had a situation last year where a team kind of was perpetually canceling matches and was not doing while they'd communicate with the other team, they wouldn't communicate with the official. So then one of our people was showing up to officiate and no one was there. And that just super sucks. So like, be polite, don't do that, okay? And yeah, we'll just we'll just not do that. Okay, thank you. Can I, quick yes. question on the refs, because I'm new. Yes. And I had the first week, how do you, what do you guys do to get the refs? I mean, I know what you said, just kind of find somebody. I, but like, how yes. much is it? Okay, so uh, uh, yeah. with Rick in the West, with Rick in the West, he put a contact for the, for the agency or the organization. Uh, I am currently trying to find that for Dallas. Um, I've reached out to Tasso and asked him for a contact person for us, but I haven't heard back yet. If I don't hear back tomorrow, I will add on to the link that I sent you a lot of the refs that we generally use. Just people who like know our league and have worked with us a lot, who are willing to travel. How about work. price one? I mean, because I have zero funds. I don't have a clue. I think generally speaking for an up ref, <laughs> it's about 50, right? I think we pay a little bit more. I think it's 75. I think it's 75. Ours is 80. Yeah. So if you play a JV, does that do you charge the kids? Is yes. Is your school? Do you charge the kids? Is that 75 or the kids? Five. Yes, and regardless how many sets. Okay, regardless how many sets. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right. per, per match. It's per match. Most of us. Dallas is the same. Sorry. Do most of us just use an up ref? Yes, that, and for, for cost reasons, like I said, we never had two officials at Rockwell last year. The only place where we had two officials was a Jesuit because they're just so cool. <laughs> so rotation, we're just kind of. They, the, I, I'm telling you that the, the the up officials, two things. One, the up officials, it, it's it's just, it, it's not that complicated, and they really can't see it. And like, we're we're not. 
I'm not saying that we don't care that they're in the right spots. We do, right? right? We want them playing the game by the rules, and that's super important, especially as we get into the playoffs and we got two officials. If they're like in the habit of not lining up in the wrong spot, like you're going to lose point every single time, right? But our, our officials, especially with our newer teams, our inexperienced guys at the early part of the season, our, our your officials, most of them are going to understand that part of their role is to help be an ambassador and a teacher. And they'll like stop and say, hey, that, hey, you need to go over there instead of, you know, like high school girls volleyball where the expectation is you better know the thing. That whistle blows and no one's giving you a warning because if someone gave you a warning, that opposing coach is going ballistic saying we should have got that point. That's our, our culture is different than that. Right, and if you want to go like ballistic to try to get a point because the other team was out of rotation, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> you're just in the wrong room. Okay, like it's like we're we're trying to teach the game. Does that answer? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Uniforms. Does everybody have their uniforms? <laughs> Or, or we're working, yeah. And if, if if we're working on it, and we get to that first game, and we haven't quite got it together yet, we're all going to be cool. And if you're rolling out there and we're taping on numbers, <laughs> right? Like two years ago was the first year Wiley East had a team. I kid you not, they rolled into our gym. The coach handed out white T-shirts and a sharpie before the game and they all drew their numbers on. Awesome, we got to play a high school volleyball match. Yes? Um, I remember last year we had a few complications with libero jerseys. Mm -hmm. So um, are there gonna be any like really strict restrictions on the libero jersey must be the opposing color or if we show up without one but we have a libero? No. Okay. No, and we can, if, if, if you run into the rare scenario where the official, again, doesn't have a great understanding of our league and what we're all about, just right? Just call me. Yeah, or we just, we'll just, we can usually get together with the other coach and go, hey, come here. We both agree that that's okay. We both agree that that's okay, right? But we, we again, we had a scenario last year, uh, Plano East came and played us and not all their guys showed up. So they had six dudes and one only had a libero jersey. Technically, they forfeit. Their libero hit outside because we wanted to play the game, right? And if they beat us, they beat us. Cool, okay? Okay, okay. Um, that is that. Okay, so next one. We are... Again, as we're getting a little further into this journey, we're trying to be progressively more structured. What that means this year is all of our matches are scheduled on Tuesday nights. And the expectation is that in North Texas, the matches are going to be played on Tuesday nights. Unless, unless the two coaches get together and for whatever reason decide hey we can't play this Tuesday this week we're gonna have to push our match to Wednesday or Thursday okay if the two coaches agree and again we're trying to work together right we're trying to work together it's our spring break all my guys are out of town on this Tuesday can we reschedule that of course We'll reschedule that match, okay? If we reschedule a match, we need to communicate to our region captain. So if you're in the West and you reschedule a match, as soon as we agree upon it, we need to communicate that to Rick. Central, we need to communicate that to Damon. East, you need to communicate that to me. Match up question. Just scratch it. Perfect, sorry. Okay. Uh, but again, 
like we're, we're just, we're in about year 10 here and we're, we're trying to get more structure to where we can, you know, like go to our parents and say, here's a schedule. All right. You know, like that would be, a, that'll, that'll be the first for us this year for me to go to our parents and say, here's a schedule. Okay. That we just, we just never had that before. Okay. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it'd be super cool. Okay. And in, in, in even with that schedule, there are going to be adjustments that have to be made and we're going to work together so that everybody gets to play all their matches on the like rare occasion. Again, we had a rare scenario last year where two teams were supposed to play and the other one of the teams just kept canceling and kept canceling and kept canceling. And that is a rarity. But if we find ourselves in that spot, and then as a league, we have to like step in and go, this totally sucks, you're forfeiting that game. And the ultimate tragedy is you didn't get to play that game, right? We just want to play the games, okay? But that should be a last resort. All right, max preps. This is huge, okay? Rick has linked an instruction step by step how to get your high school boys volleyball team on max preps for your high school. So in the digital version of this, it's a link, you click on it, there's a step by step, this is how I get my team even if I'm not a coach on campus. Okay? So I I won't go through the steps. The, the only part that we could get hung up on is your school's athletic director has to approve it. That, that's, the, that's the only potential sticking point, okay? Where a kid or yourself is gonna need to let your school athletic director know, hey, we requested through Max Preps that they include boys volleyball on the South Lake Carroll max preps. And as long as the athletic director goes, cool, they just have to say, accept. And then it's done, right? Yes, sir. And what if they don't? Then you're not on max preps. Okay. And there's no getting around it. And, and, and you will continue, like we are all gonna do, to report your scores to me. But what, like, by the end of this season, I really believe we can get 90% of our teams on max reps, which gets us like this close to no one has to report scores anywhere but max preps. And then we can all see all of each other's results and everything's there. And there's no middleman, there's no like, oh, you emailed me those scores, but you wrote the loser score first, they're, 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 there's none of that, right? Because if we're all on max preps, we can see each other's and you can, it, it, it just works. It just works and it helps legitimize what we're doing because max preps is a national platform where every high school program in every sport reports all their scores. And we just wanna be part of that game, okay? So if you could make that like not your number one priority, but up on your list of things to do, that would be awesome, awesome, awesome. And each of your district captains is gonna be contacting you going, hey, how's Max Preps going? How can I help you? What do we need to do? Let's get on the phone. Let's do this together, okay? So, okay, that is that. Photos and videos? Yeah, please send them. I've already gotten some and it's really exciting. Um, because the more that I get from other teams, the more that I can get like celebrating your eyes on social media, um, and especially Instagram is a really big way that we hit uh, we get new teams. And you get a lot of contacts for that. So the more I can put up there, the more we can grow, um, and the more we can celebrate different teams besides Judgment and Rockwall and some other teams. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the playoffs and how that's going to work. Okay, so in each of our districts. Four teams will advance out of district play. Those four teams, it's gonna be determined exclusively by your district record, all right? So it's just those seven games. 
You can play 100 games for all I care. You want to schedule a non-district match, you want to play every team in your district nine times, awesome. I think the more you play, the, the better it is, okay? It's that first time you play that team in your district on the scheduled, this is our district match, that's the one that counts on your official record, those seven matches. And based on those seven matches, the top four teams in your district advance to regionals. So 12 teams come out. Last year was the first year that we hosted three regional tournaments. We had a set of four at Heath. We had a set of four at Decatur and a set of four. Where was our third location Wiley last East. year? East. At Wiley East. It was so cool. It's the first time we did it and it was awesome. Okay. So based on how all those teams finish, they get seeded into those three regions. You won't be in the same, it won't be the top four teams are all in the same region. Does that make sense? So the top four teams won't, your, your four teams won't be in your same group of four, okay? So based on everybody's results, that's how the tournament gets seeded. And we have four over here, four over here, four over here. Saturday night, April 27th, Saturday night, April 27th, 10th, 26th, excuse me. It's April 26th is the beginning of regionals. Jesuit is a host school, Decatur's a host school, and Rockwell's a host school this year. So the top four teams from the West will meet in Decatur. Well, no, 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 because no. they all split up. Uh, they all split up. Kind of like the UIL playoffs. Yep, it's like the UIL playoffs. They all, they all split up. Okay, um, Saturday night, there'll be two matches. Those semifinal matches will happen on Saturday. Excuse me, I keep saying Saturday, it's Friday night. The 26th is Friday night. And then on Saturday the 27th, we'll have two more matches. There'll be a third place match. And then the two winning teams will play each other. So the two losing teams on Friday will play each other on Saturday. The two winning teams on Friday will play each other on Saturday. The winner of the two winning teams advances to the state tournament. At that, on that Saturday, all those teams will be awarded one or more all region certificates to their players. Does that make sense? So what determines who goes where of the four, the top four in each division? So once we get down to it, right, we, the, the board, has to see the whole thing. Okay. And part, part it's, 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 it's not perfect. Can I just start out and say that? Yeah. It's not perfect. So it's some, not, it's not like percent. UIL where everything's preset and part of that is like if if Rockwall, Decatur, and Jesuit are all in the tournament, we all need to be at our sites. So that that's one determiner. And then to the best of our ability, we're going to see these four teams, these four teams, and these four teams. Okay. And not and, and again it's not perfect it's it's not perfect but we'll have you know the top team out of each district is going to be given what what we think is a better seat cool. is that yeah i say it isn't perfect definitely okay we're, we're, we're doing our best to put those 12 teams where where they are most aptly suited okay so then after regionals is done, three teams from North Texas advance to the state tournament, which is on May 3rd and May 4th. Wiley High School is gonna be the site of our state tournament this year. There'll be three North Texas teams, and there will be one team from either Austin or Houston. They're gonna play each other. The winner of Houston is gonna play the winner of Austin to determine who comes up. up here. Yep. Cool. Okay. And then it's the same format in the state tournament as the regional tournament. 
where semifinals are Friday night, third place match on Saturday, finals on Saturday. And then all state awards are given out on Saturday. And that is the league season. Okay. Before we talk about the additional tournaments, are there any questions about any of that? Yes, sir. How should I present the USAB insurance certificate to my school? I want to show the proof of insurance. So, that's a good the question. The school wants to know that you're insured? Yeah, I don't think they know. We're the, we're the school that's charging for us to go to the gym. Yeah. Um, there should be, there should be a guys. share button because I have I have had people just like share the registrations from their members with me. I'm not quite sure how they did that, but I will find out for you. Okay, okay and I'll contact you um, in the next couple of days. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah. Okay. The league is providing three additional avenues to play a bunch of volleyball this year. So we are hosting. We'll call them three sanctioned open tournaments. Uh, these are open to Division One as well as Division Two teams. Anybody can sign up for these things. Okay. The first one is being hosted by Jesuit on March second. It's a hundred and fifty dollar entry fee. That does two things. We want to charge an entry fee because if you don't charge an entry fee, people just don't show up. You're like, yeah, we're coming to the tournament when we signed up. Nah, I'm just not feeling it. So you got to charge entry fee, right? So you got something to lose for not showing up. That's number one. Number two, we got to pay for the officials. So really $150 really just offsets the cost of the officials. Okay? So Jesuits running a tournament on March 2nd. Rockwell is going to run an open tournament on, what does it say on there? March 23rd. And then Houston is going to be running a tournament down there on April 20th. It's the first time there's been a league-wide tournament outside of North Texas ever. Rockwell's going. Rockwell's going. And the more of us that can convince our kids and our parents to go down and play in that tournament, the better. In Houston? In Houston. It is not a requirement. It is not something you need to stress out about. But if it's something you look at and go, okay, I can get into that. Okay? The, the more teams that we can, can get going down there to hook up with our Houston friends down there and lock up in a tournament, the better. Do we, okay. know, do we know what's where the site is? It is at the club. It so Casey Price, that's running the tournament, used to be the Klein Collins head coach. He's now exclusively at a club, and he's running it out of his club. And he still agreed to just charge 150 bucks. So there's no additional charge to use their courts. Um, as soon as I get all of the the details on those tournaments. We'll email them out to you. So how to register, how to get involved. Um, I think they're, because of court limitations, we, we may have to cap the number of teams in the Jesuit tournament. In Rockwall, we, we'll, we'll, we'll take however many teams. I've got five schools that, that I can put people in. So we can, we can load it up. There's no cap on that one. And same thing down in Houston. He's, he's got a whole club facility. So whoever signs up, he can accommodate. Yes, sir. Out, how much do you budget for that Houston trip? I haven't even thought about it. Um, so we, you, you can, <laughs> so there's two ways, obviously, to address it, right? Like you can, cause it's a one day tournament. So you can go insano, like <laughs> Summer Creek did last year when they came up here for a tournament and then drove back. They got up at two in the morning, drove up here, and then drove back that night. Okay? Sarah Aguilar is in, in, uh, insane, okay? But the, like, the, the, she, she couldn't fit, convince her parents to like, hey, maybe we should like spend the night at a hotel or something, right? 
but her guys still wanted to come, so they did it in one day, right? If you're doing it in one day, that is a lot less expensive than, right? Like, okay, we're gonna find a hotel, and and then if 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 that's what you want to do, right? We've got a couple different scenarios there. I would suggest that if we were doing it that way, that we go like the, the easiest way to go liability wise is your parents have to come with you and you got to stay with your parents. That's the, the least liability that anyone's taking on. Okay. Like Sarah, I'm also a bit of a crazy person. So I will probably get five rooms and put four guys in a room and say, I'm responsible for these guys. But again, I've been doing this my whole life. Right? I've traveled teams for 25 years. And I'm just a little bit crazy. Okay? I, the, the, the wiser way to go would, would be the other. Is either go, we're doing it in one shot, we're driving, or we're coming back. And there we go. Or like this this is a we're all doing this together. Come on, guys. So You could have a family scenario that you know everyone stays. With. This is something that we did. When we, right. You know, you have they know somebody. You know, someone in, on your team has family in the area, and they're crazy enough to let the team all crash. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly. So my son played club uh, volleyball at Texas Tech, and they played in a tournament in Dallas. His entire Texas Tech, the entire Texas Tech club volleyball team, stayed in my living room. <laughs> Right? Like 12, 20 year old dudes just, you know, sprawled out, happy as can be. Right? So that could be a scenario as well. So I take it that the USAV insurance only applies when the boys are on the court and not the night before at the hotel. I would imagine. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, okay. yes. Good question. Yes. yes. So as much as I'm saying, let's go, let's go, let's go, we also got to know what we're doing. Okay? Okay, um, I, I mentioned Division Two at the beginning of this thing. Um, we've got four play dates that are listed on there. Uh, we're, we have locations that people have signed up for, but we also have a club facility that's considering hosting all of them. And if we have a club facility that's willing to host all of them, we're going to let them do it. So, so we'll we'll communicate that as well. Okay. For the All right. Plan. So the date. So it, it is it the okay. The tournaments, the Division One tournaments, the Open tournaments. Those are one day, pool play in the morning, and then you advance to bracket play in the afternoon into the evening. However long it takes mm -hmm. to go single elimination until we get one winner. Yeah. The Division Two. It's just pool play. Okay. So again, the commitment of time is. So you might play two or three games at nine. Like nine a.m. to two p.m. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. Like okay. Yep. Perfect. So yes. we got we got three teams. We're like, yeah, we can all play that weekend. Yep. We're gonna put them on a court, let them all play each other. <laughs> High five. We're going up. Those are Saturdays. Those are all on Saturdays. Okay. Yes. And yep. Those and are three. Those, those are, are separate divisions. There. So that's only D2? Mm -hmm. okay. Only Division two teams can play those. Oh, I thought you said we could show up and, and the, join So ju just, just just the Division two teams oh. are playing in those. Yes. yes. Okay. I thought he wanted them. So that was if, if we heard of a team. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so know where those will be yet, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. The dates are locked. Dates are locked. But okay. Locations are not locked. Got it. We have like four different schools. We're like, okay, well, I can do that one either, but we're still waiting on Ameris Sports to say either I'll give you quotes or I won't. Luke, well, if you hear of any teams that are interested in playing, it's kind of too late to do Division One because schedules are set. But they could join Division Two and get started playing this year. We had one join. Our alternator emailed me today and joined up for Division Two. So. Um, 
And we yeah. have no additional cost for the team signed up as Division Two, right? They're already so their registration was a hundred dollars, and I think we were the registration cost. We're saying fifty bucks. Okay. Same thing, just a, a bit, a little bit of scale, okay. right? But you, you pay your hundred dollars just to say you're in, you're in the league. We can count you as one of our teams, okay. and then fifty bucks per term and you want play. Perfect. I was curious about how many people thought they would have a JV or felt pretty solid about that. <laughs> okay. What schools are those? I'm just curious. What do you think? Steel. And Marcus. Okay. And Wiley. And Wiley. Okay. So, but in, in, in that, that second division is also an additional opportunity for your your JV team to play. So if you want to sign your JV team up okay. as a Division II team, that's there for you. Is that another $100 for them? It's $100 for them. Yep. For person? No, 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 no. For the whole team. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. The whole team. Okay? The whole team can register as a Division II if you have a JV team. Right? So... Wiley's got a second team that's in there. Rockwell's got a second team that's in there. Allen's got a second team that's in there. South Lake Carroll already has a second team that's in there. Jesuit's got a second team that's in there. A lot of our teams have registered a, a, a JV team in Division Two, And then we have additional teams that, like R.L. Turner and like two or three others, that all the only team they have is in Division Two. And we've got a team uh, from East, like way out East, Marshall. Perfect. Right. You may you may have already mentioned this, but for the season tournament, so you're number seven on the on the yes. there. Is that only um, Division One, or can Division Two teams join the Division One tournament? Those those are open tournaments for everybody, right? Division Two, Division One, those are open tournaments. So the Division Two teams or the Division Two tournaments are only Division Two teams. The those three tournaments are open to anybody. Technically, they can go eight tournaments. Yeah. Actually, three and seven. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So regionals and state is just for the varsity teams? Just for the varsity teams. Okay. Yep. Just for the varsity teams. What is y'all's like rule of thumb for overly passionate parents in the, <laughs> in the state? Like, do you have, okay, X, Y, and Z happens, and then you're done. Or we get one warning, two warnings, and then you're out. Like, what is your, what is your process for overly passionate parents? Is that in in? I, I would I would just say, I I've been fortunate enough not to have a crazy person as of yet um, yeah there we go that's good okay um, I, I would say this again because of the nature of our league if if we were hosting a match dog on it if we were if we were if, if I'm playing at your place and there is someone acting a fool I will personally stop the whole game We'll just say, hang on a sec. And I'll just walk right over to the stance and say, hey man, do we need to stop playing? Or do you need to leave? Or do you need to be quiet? Those are our three options. Because if you continue, the whole game's over. We'll just all have to stop. This is on you. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. You, you got three options here. You can either leave, because you just can't handle being here. Okay? Or, you can sit down and just be quiet, or you continue, and we'll we'll stop this whole match. And will that be a draw? And then we'll communicate that with the league, <laughs> right? And then we'll communicate that with the league, and then we'll handle. We we will figure out how to address that. I want to say just a couple things about that. There is a different feel to what we do than the girls. There games. really is. And I will also say this as the coach. If you are going ballistic and your parents are going to 
because they're kind of watching you and then they're not sure why you're upset, but they'll just kind of join in as pretend experts. And again, getting back to it more so in our league, the official can mess up and it shouldn't really affect us. And that's kind of modeling what the parents, and they generally, generally kind of follow. It just has a different spirit. Yeah. It really has a different spirit, uh, the boys volleyball league that I, I've experienced. Yes, me too. Yeah. So, I, and I, I do get that fear. And I think that, but I do think that there are a different set of social cues than what exists in a club environment when everyone's all packed together and it feels like you're trying to get a bid to the Olympics. You know, you're not, but it feels like it. This is different. So I, I, that's my experience. But call me, I'll come over and do that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem doing that. We just might have our hands full with the parent or student. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> what school are you at? Wiley <laughs> East. Oh, well, we'll be playing each other. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Three times a day. It's $5 for everybody, but for you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. I just we want to know what the... We haven't had a league-wide ban yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll make, yeah, a, I, I, we'll make a poster, yeah. send it around, post it at all yeah. league events. <laughs> this this nice <laughs> young man is not allowed, allowed to <laughs> enter into any of our yeah, events. Yeah. Okay. We holler at our players, and I mean, it just it seems like it, it was intense. So I just want to know, going forward... Okay. What we, what we, oh, you have, you have video of it? Clips of him, Oregon. So yeah. I really didn't hear him saying it because he was, he was, he was not. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there was a scrimmage. It wasn't even a game. Yeah. Was a oh. yeah. He was pretty dense. So, so okay. I'm not suggesting everybody do this, but I actually just talked to, to administration today. And for the state tournament, we're going to have an RSO. We're going to have administration. We, we're we're going to have security. There's there's handling of money as well. We just want to make sure everything is. Yeah. And so if something gets to that point, then then we can, if the official can stop and say, hey, you know what? Go to the, go to the, sec the security and just say, hey, you know what? This guy is, is causing some problems or something. But maybe that's an option. If you guys can maybe get an RSO there or somebody who can help them and, and you don't have to do it yourself. And they've got that position already in the district. Maybe that helps, so that's what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Well, on that super positive now, <laughs> do we have any other questions? Yes. Sorry, one more thing. No. We have a team manager on the bench, uh -huh. but they're not a player and they're not a coach. Do they still need to pay for a USBD membership? Yeah, anyone, are they 18? No. I think they still need a membership, but they don't have to do the coaches. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We'll finish where we started. I really appreciate you guys coming out. I appreciate you volunteering to make this happen for these guys. Um, this is a labor of love, and we're all all working together. And as we get into the season, whatever comes up, like literally we're here to help facilitate your season going well. So any questions, any funkiness, like never, never, never hesitate to reach out to myself, to Gina, to Damon, to the board, go, hey, this is, this is what we're running into. And can we help? Problem solve this. And that's, is what, that kind of the captain model? Would we have that captain per? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the first point first of contact point. is that that captain in your district, and then we'll, we're all we're all working together to make this thing go great. So and mostly, 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 this thing has been great, 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 great. So and break. <laughs> I would love it if you grabbed a snack or two. <laughs> <laughs>